Hello, my name is uh, Bijoy Thomas and I am one of the neuroradiologists at the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology in Kerala, India. And uh, welcome to my channel 5 Minutes Neuroimaging with Bijoy Thomas. Today, we will discuss about the mid-sagittal anatomy of the brainstem and the cerebellum. So, if you look at the, the brainstem, it has got a midbrain, the pons and the middle oblongata and the midbrain develops from the mesencephalon and the hindbrain from the rhombencephalon which is again divided into metencephalon and the myelencephalon from the metencephalon the pons as well as the cerebellum develops so developmentally the the midbrain and the medulla uh, should be almost equal in vertical height whereas the pons in the vertical height should be at least uh, one and a half to two times the height of both medulla as well as the midbrain so uh, this is really important in order to understand the developmental anomalies of the brainstem now coming to the vermis the vermis as divided into three parts uh, by a primary fissure and a pre-pyramidal fissure and it is actually divided into three different divisions the first one consists of three different lobules called the lingula central lobule and the culmen and the next one with the decli folium and tuber and finally the pyramid uvula and the nodiolus of which the dft the middle part of these lobules is the smallest now coming to the height of the vermis vermis usually extends from the intercollicular level to the level of the orbex and this is the normal height of the vermis now coming to the line drawn between the iter and the orbex usually the vestigial point should be in the mid portion of this line that means which is connecting the lowermost part of the aqueduct of sylvius to the level of the lowermost part of the fourth ventricle if you connect a line and uh, the the vestigial point which is at the roof of the fourth ventricle underneath the vestigious nucleus lies is in the mid portion and if you compare the uh, this uh, point which is actually slightly below the level of the uh, the mid uh, point of the pons so this is the normal anatomy and uh, this is the vestigial point which we have uh, uh, discussed you must be wondering why we need to know this anatomy in this detail uh, because in order to understand genetic anomalies which which are involving uh, the brainstem and the cerebellum we need to have this idea for example the height of the pons as well as the the midbrain and the medulla are determined genetically by various signaling proteins and um, like for example the gpx and the rtx and anomalies of these expressions can lead on to abnormalities in the development of the brainstem for example in this case you can see that the pons is elongated and there is a very poor differentiation between the medulla and the pons and also associated with uh, other anomalies like a worm in hyperplasia as well as a corpus callosal anomaly so see this can be seen in uh, several conditions including two bilinopathies and which uh, we will discuss uh, sometime later uh, the nomenclature is important you have to differentiate between cerebellar vermian hypoplasia and atrophy if you see this particular worm is the height is extending from the intercollicular line to not to the level of the orbex the inferior vermis is significantly hyperplastic and if you see the superior vermis there is uh, the folia are actually separated out there is significant space between these folia so there is an inferior worm in hyperplasia as well as a superior worm in atrophy in this particular case and you should not uh, be confused between uh, these terminologies and the the, the terminologies are really important in order to understand specific anomalies involving the cerebellar vermis. I hope uh, the video was useful to you and if you like the video please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that notifications of future videos will be immediately available to you. Thank you.